All general use airports in the United States have surfaces which are established in relation to the airport and each runway end. They are referred to as imaginary surfaces because they define volumes of airspace which are invisible to the human eye. The size of each surface is based on the category of each runway according to the type of approach available or planned for that runway. For example, this represents a civil airport with only visual approaches. As such, the pilot must land the aircraft relying only on visual references, not his instruments or other electronic navigational aids. In this particular example, the runway is 4,014 feet in length and 50 feet in width. In order to help you understand the relationship that the imaginary surfaces have with each other, we will display each surface and describe it. We will exaggerate the vertical scale for more clarity. The first surface we'll discuss is the primary surface. The primary surface is the only surface which exists solely at ground level. It is centered on the runway, is at the same elevation as the runway, and it extends 200 feet beyond each runway end. The primary surface is to be kept clear of all objects except those that are critical to the operation of aircraft, such as runway lights, signs, or electronic nav aids. The second surface is the approach surface. The approach surface is one of the most critical surfaces, since it is the one which an aircraft uses for approach to landing. The degree to which the approach surface slopes outward and upward depends on the type of approach for that runway end. The slope can be either a 20 to 1, a 34 to 1, or a 50 to 1. In this particular example, the approach surface slope is 20 to 1. That is, for each 20 feet outward, you go upward one foot. Airports such as SeaTac International have a 50 to 1 precision instrument approach. To the greatest extent possible, you want to have the approach surface clear of all objects so that nothing can impede the landing of an aircraft on final approach. The third surface is the transitional surface. The transitional surface extends outward and upward from the sides of an airport and its runway, or runways. The transitional surface starts at the edge of the primary surface and always rises at a standard slope of 7 to 1. The fourth surface is the horizontal surface. This flat surface rests 150 feet above the airport's elevation. Its shape is determined by swinging arcs from the center of the end of the primary surface for each runway end. In this case, the radius used is 5,000 feet. The fifth surface is the conical surface. The conical surface starts at the edge of the horizontal surface and extends outward and upward at a standard 20 to 1 slope for a horizontal distance of 4,000 feet and a vertical rise of 200 feet. This puts the outer edge of the conical surface at 350 feet above the airport elevation. Earlier, we exaggerated the vertical scale for more clarity. Now we'll take away that exaggeration to show you what it really looks like.